Well, hello there, guys, and welcome back to the Battle of Marston Moor as the Royalists, of course. And we are trying to go ahead and defeat the Parliamentarian Hordes here, um, as well as their Scottish allies. Now, the only thing I can do at this point, of course, I've moved all of my troops. You guys were here last turn when I did that. And at this point, all I can really do is end the turn and let the enemy go ahead and take his chance. So we're going to give it to the Parliamentarians and the Scots, and we're going to hope that everything goes well. But already they have pretty good volley shots here. Right off the bat. So my saving grace is the fact that my men are kind of covered. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to matter. Let's see how the melee phase goes. So very, very even there. Um, still on the enemy's left flank, and that's where Cromwell is. So it's really my most contested area here. But we're actually being pretty even, which is good, because that can help us focus on the middle and the left, for now at least. Oh, that's not so good. Enemy unit one killed 18 of our cavaliers. All right, there we go. So that's a very close... Very, very, very normal close combat engagement. 16 of enemy casualties die, 13 of ours die. That's kind of what we want, but we prefer, of course, more of the enemy dead as opposed to us. Interesting. All right, so indecisive once again. And once again, the enemy unit won. In this, in this case, our unit actually broke, which is going to be a big problem. Um, and they have nowhere to actually run to. So now this unit's going to break too. Now that sucks. Uh, I don't know what we can do about that. We really need to mitigate that. Because that's going to basically... We're going to lose the entire battle just because of that. It's going to make our entire center line break. We really need to be careful. And as you can see, we've got another unit that's fallen back. It's not looking good for the Royalists right now. Uh, but we're going to absolutely do our best. Okay, in this case, we actually managed to fragment enemy unit. Which is good. And one of our units broke, unfortunately. The Musketeer unit, which I was worried about anyway. Alright. Our unit won, but this doesn't really do much. So a lot of small skirmishes going on around the map, but actually it's ending in us losing, which is really unfortunate here. We have managed to get a few of those skirmish wins, but really the main point is this center area. And as you can see, we're losing a lot of men. And at this point, it's just now the parliamentarian. Wow. We're actually getting more damage than we're dealing with our uh, musketeers. We actually managed to disrupt the unit that charged us. We killed 38 of their men, if you guys can see that. That was a pretty nice defense. Is moving forward. We got a pretty nice musket hit on them, but I don't know how long that's going to last. Wow. The enemy is moving up really well. So at this point, I think, I mean, basically, they're trying to con just basically match uh, our pike line. And the, the interesting thing is, in most battles like this, in pike and shot, the enemy tends to stay back. Um, in this case, the enemy came straight for us, even with, with us in cover, etc. So I think they're very confident about their chances. And especially with the Scottish reinforcements, it does look like they're going to be victorious at the end of the day here. They were in history. Um, but whether or not they're going to be victorious at the end of the day here, I don't know. Um, of course, we've got a lot of cavalry coming here, but I'm more worried about the right flank here. Cromwell's line, and we're actually holding that line pretty well, incredibly. Alright, fair enough. Some disrupted units, that's bad! We're actually getting one of our, uh, one of the units that, um, the musketeer units that I was using to fight Cromwell's cavalry here has just been crushed. And I was actually worried about this happening. So I'm going to learn a lesson from this because he was totally cut off from retreat and now he's dispersed. Which means that all of the men basically just went home to their farms. They couldn't care less about the war, they just want to go home. Um, you really can't. Alright, more royalists, come on. Or, excuse me, parliamentarians. Side you're fighting for. Mm -hmm. 
Alright, so as you guys can see here, we're getting a chance to go ahead and fire our volleys off, and uh, so are they, but it's definitely a plus for us because we desperately need to get some kills here. Alright, our cavalry leaders have once again. It's just basically indecisive, that's alright. Um, as long as we remain indecisive, but I really want to get into my turn, so I have an opportunity here to sort of respond to the enemy onslaught, which is what's happening to our men right now. Alright. Fair enough, fair enough. So in this case, we've got another unit that's breaking, and this is what we don't want to happen. All of our lines are becoming fragmented here, um, and that's leading to basically all of our units routing. At this point, we only have one unit routing. Well, two now. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's not good. Um, the enemy's going to chase us, and it's just not going to lead to good things. Um, over here, we have a very indecisive battle, so that's fine. I don't mind indecisive battles at all, um, but I really do want to go ahead and finish up here. So let's see. Wow, we actually got, we actually destructed the enemy unit, although it wasn't a break, and at the end of the day, their other unit came in to reinforce them and killed 16 of our troops. That's far too many men to lose. Once again, disrupted a unit. I'd love to actually break this unit by the end of the turn, uh, but I'm not sure if it's going to happen. And once again, we actually, wow, we managed to break some veteran parliamentarian horse. Um, and we're going to be chasing them, obviously, for the rest of the battle, which is awesome. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. And uh, let's see if we can't go ahead and break some more units before the end of the turn. Beautiful. We fragmented some enemy horse. And this is exactly what we're looking for, guys. And once again, over here at the hedgerows, it's very bloody and very even combat. Uh, but we have managed to make an enemy unit fall back, and maybe if we fire on them, we can go ahead and break them. Beautiful. So it is our turn now, guys. I'm First thing I'm thinking of is going to have to break the enemy unit. I'm going to go ahead and fire on them. <laughs> now, this unit is still in combat, so we have to obviously worry, deal with that and worry about it. Go ahead and open fire on that unit, and um, let's see. Can I open fire? What happened if I charge? Okay, actually, we have a 32% chance to win. I'm absolutely going to charge the Scot Scottish Cavalry unit. And uh, the enemy Scots horse are basically very even to us in this particular battle, um, which is unlikely. But we're going to go ahead and keep things going. As you can see, all of our men are engaged in close combat. We have very few chances to actually assist them uh, in a close combat situation, basically. Uh, I'm going to see if we can go ahead and charge the enemy. I don't think we can. Wow. Interesting. We can charge, although... It ended up in us falling back, so clearly not the best idea. Uh, I want to go ahead and move this unit here, and uh, just basically have them defend against Cromwell's major cavalry attack here. We can see that they're attacking on all fronts. I'd love to go ahead and actually charge, and I'm going to. I'm going to take that risk, even though it's very unlikely that we will win. Um, it's not extremely unlikely. Our chances are 10% versus 17% chance of failure. So I'm going to go ahead and take that percentage because right now, that is the only thing that's going to win us the battle. Um, these guys are still fighting. Alright, let's take a look here. Beautiful. So let's go ahead. We'll open fire on these guys. Um, yeah, once again, we're not going to do very well in a close combat situation with most of our men. So what we really want to do is just keep opening fire and hurting the enemy as much as we can. Uh, let's go ahead. Another, and actually, I'll turn. Oh no, that's actually a parliamentarian enemy right there, guys. Um, I'm gonna turn towards him and see if I can't fire at him. Unfortunately, we can't. Oh no, I didn't even want to do that. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and open fire, and uh, I think for the rest of our guys, we'll just kind of keep them in this formation. One of them is actually fragmented which is not awesome, but um, I would really like to get one of these guys basically um, attacking the enemy eventually. Alright, let's see. One of our enemy units is fragmented. Um, wow, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to break them this turn unless we get... Actually, let's go ahead and go on this crazy charge. We're impacting the enemy, 13, and they're actually still staying in formation. That's pretty amazing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't do anything to these guys over here, but most of them are actually in combat. <laughs> um, let's see. 
except for one unit will turn towards the enemy. Weird way to turn, but whatever. And make sure that everybody else has done their turn. If you guys have any suggestions on continuing here, let me know. But at this point, I'm going to go ahead and end the turn here. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, it, we really just need to wait for the enemy to respond and see what's going to happen in the residual combat phase because for, most, for the most part, this is all close combat. And I think right now the enemy is about to break through unless we get some sort of miracle. Um, we do have some enemy units that are fragmented here, but I don't think it's going to win us the battle. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you had a good time, and don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe. Take care.